It is a Wednesday early morning, half past seven in Bangkok, on the 19th of August 2020. We are a little more than 20 adventurers from the Food and Agriculture Organization, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and of course UNESCO Bangkok. Some of us are with family. To commemorate the International Day for the Conservation of the Mangrove Ecosystem from the 26th of July, we set out for a half-day visit to the mangrove forest in Samut Songkran, southwest of Bangkok, to learn about the importance of mangrove forests. The forest in Samut Songkram stretches almost two kilometers along the coast and a part of it allowed us to walk along a high path above and among the growing mangroves, to experience the unique ecosystem and learn about its function. At the forest, which also serves as a school on nature, Mr. Bisut Mwamsiri, the local site manager and chair of the community network on coastal management, explained to us the need to restore the local mangrove forest as the entire community needed to relocate. The site is being replanted with mangroves because wind and sea waves have eroded the coastline over the last two decades and flooding went further land inward, in particular during storms. Mangroves are a natural coastal defense against storm surges as well as coastal erosion happening because of rising sea levels and other extreme weather impacts such as tsunamis. Mangrove forests cushion the impact of sea waves up to 99%. But mangrove forests are disappearing fast. It is estimated that more than half of the worldwide mangrove forests have already been lost, primarily due to human interference. Mangroves play an important role in today's changing climate as they capture carbon dioxide in their biomass as well as in the soil. 10,000 square meter of mangrove forests, that is a little more than two football fields, can store 3,700 tons of carbon. That's the emission equivalent of 2,600 cars for one year. Deforesting mangroves does not only elevate carbon dioxide, but also releases methane that was sequestered in the soil. For an idea, one kilogram of methane equals the effect of 84 kilograms of carbon dioxide. As halophytes, these coastal plants are uniquely seawater tolerant. And because more than 96% of the planet's water is salt water, mangroves offer a unique alternative for sustainably managed cash crops along the coast. Mangrove forests also house a unique biodiversity above and below water. Depending on the region in the world, they serve as nursery habitats for fish, amphibians, crabs and other crustaceans. And they are a food source for monkeys, deer, birds or kangaroos besides attracting honeybees with their nectar. Restoring and maintaining mangrove forests doesn't just have benefits for nature itself, but for society at the same time, by offering a sustainable source of food and income, even when managed scientifically. In case you haven't seen it already, mangroves have a particular form of reproduction by germinating their seeds while still hanging on the tree. Once the germinating seed has become long enough, it becomes too heavy to hang onto the tree and darts downward into the soil. There it begins to grow roots and form a new mangrove tree. Our adventurers shot plenty of photos, which we will show as information material on the 3rd Mekong Mangrove Forum on the 1st of October 2020, where they will highlight the importance of UNESCO's conservation sites, biosphere reserves, geoparks and UNESCO's heritage sites for the protection of our environment. I hope you enjoyed this little video about our excursion into the mangroves and perhaps consider visiting a mangrove forest in the future too. Bye-bye.